Hi everybody, it's Ingrid from Twinkle and today I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for teaching spelling. I'm also going to be chatting a bit about a well-known teaching strategy, look, say, cover, write, check. If you don't know what that is, it goes something like this. You look at the word, you say it, vicious, you cover it with your hand or a ruler, you write down the word, and then you check whether it's correct or not. If not, you can rewrite the word correctly. By the way, Twinkle has workbooks just like this one for students of all ages throughout primary school. So take a look if you'd like to try them with your own class or child. There are also plenty of activities here to help children practice their words like matching words to pictures, spelling with bubble letters, and even jumbling and unjumbling letters. So the burning question here is, does the strategy work? And why do we look, say, cover, write, and check in the first place? Well, the short answer, provided that the writer continues to practice these words in their reading and writing, is yes. This is because when a child covers up a spelling word and tries to rewrite it, they're relying on their ability to recall that information from their memory. This is a very important skill when it comes to learning new information, and the more the children practice it, the better they become. However, if they only do this once and then they never see that spelling word again, there's a very good chance they're going to forget it. This is why revising our spelling words regularly and maybe even keeping a bit of a spelling diary of typical words may be a good strategy to make sure that these words don't just fly out of our heads. If they've got a record of those words, they can always go back, revisit them, and practice them some more. Now that we've covered look, say, cover, write, check, let's talk about some other ways you can make spelling fun and encourage students to revisit their spelling words after their test is over. We have three activity ideas for you, so let's get to it. Activity number one is storytelling. After a spelling test, encourage students to write a story using all of their spelling words as many times as possible. This is a fun way to get some random, silly content that they can share with the class for a laugh. And if they don't know a word, there's also the opportunity to look it up and expand their vocabulary. This will also give them practice using the words in sentences and putting them into context. Activity number two is to turn them into a puzzle. Word games and puzzles are brilliant for teaching kids spelling and vocabulary. Try turning some of the tricky words into a crossword or a word search puzzle for children to work on. We actually have some videos that look specifically at the benefits for these kinds of puzzles. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you give them a watch. We even have a bunch of activities and creative ideas for you that will help you take your puzzles to the next level. Activity number three is host a finger spelling bee. You could just host a regular spelling bee, but a finger spelling bee has this extra element to it that makes it a bit more of a challenge. Not only is this a physical activity that will help engage learners who prefer doing things kinesthetically, but it's also a nice way to encourage children to learn how to finger spell. You can also turn a repetitive process into something a bit more fun as students work on their new skill. Finger spelling is something that you can learn in class and it's easy to practice regularly. Try doing it while singing along to the alphabet, for example. Even if it's just a couple of times a week, it'll help get children used to it. To host a finger spelling bee, try giving students a list of spelling words in advance so that they have time to practice them. Then ask everybody to stand up and then go around the room asking students to spell out different words. They'll spell them out with their fingers and then also say the letters as they spell. If they get one wrong, they can sit down and if they get it right, they can stay standing up and then continue on for the next round. While having a finger spelling bee may make more sense in a classroom environment, parents can still finger spell with their children at home. And those are our three suggestions for improving spelling. There is a wide variety of spelling packs for teachers and parents on the Twinkle website for children in all year levels. So please feel free to browse around and download the options that work best for you. I hope this video was useful and that you have a lovely day.